Greetings all, Blue Knight. Welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Previously, we managed to defeat Clockwell once and for all and save the world, but not before Bentley got crippled during the fight. Today, we'll be showing the rest of the Easter eggs, what we get for completing the game, and showing off all of the gadgets. I realize that they're not called power-ups, but they're called gadgets, as I should have known from the gadget power-up screen we call the gadget group. But anyways, we're here at episode 4 because this is where one of the two remaining easter eggs are. At least one of the two documented ones at this time. It has to do with that giant attack robot, aka the water tower, as we thought it was a long time ago. But if you walk far enough from it, you can see that the robot's eyes can see you, but if you turn around, then they disappear. This only worked if you walk around this corner on this platform and make sure you're facing away from the giant attack robot, otherwise the eyes will disappear. But I think if you go down here, then yeah, you can look at the robot, but the eyes will still show. You can only see the eyes from this platform only though, as far as I know. So it makes you wonder that the, if the attack robot is still active, who knows if the Contessa's plan would have come to fruition if we didn't stop her at this prison. Makes you think. The second easter egg has to do back in Paris. Now as you can see, we're in Dimitri's club. It makes a very appropriate sense since we ended the game here in Paris, I'll be showing the rest of the gadgets here too, as well as what we get for 100%. But specifically in Dimitri's club, if you whack either one of these turntables, show your bling and let me shine. you'll get a remix of the current club song that's being played right now. I'm going to be quiet for a little while so you can hear this remix, uh, because I think it's pretty cool. your bling and let me shine you all right now that we got all the easter egg stuff out of the way we can finally start the gadget showcase starting with Bentley now everyone knows about the trigger bomb which is just a throwable bomb with a remote detonator but this is one that that I didn't show, as will be the case for many of these gadgets, the snooze bomb. It works like a regular bomb if you hold down the power-up button, 
the gadget button rather but any enemy in the vicinity of the bomb will be put to sleep which makes it so much easy not so much easy it makes it very fortunate if you have so many enemies chasing you as belly you have nowhere to go and the next one is health extractor capture guards and extract medicine from them Sports like a bob, well, in case in the case of Thoroy, but if you trigger it, any enemy will be shrunk down to size to the point that you can drop an automatic health pickup, which is very fortunate, again, if you're running low on health or on the thief meter for power-ups. The next one is the reduction bomb. Shrinks all enemies in the area. Now this one you have to hold down, well you can hold down, but the range on it is very huge. I believe it's the largest range for any bomb in the game. It shrinks all enemies in the vicinity, like it has the effect of the snooze bomb, except it shrinks enemies. And like I said before, shrunken enemies with Bentley can make them easier to fight, because they go down a fewer hits. Next we got the Adrenaline Burst. I referenced this back in one of the Canada levels, but this is a power-up that you can make uh, Bentley run faster. It only goes for a short time, but you can be traveling places with Bentley very, very sh efficient. But it does use up quite a bit on the Thief Meter, so be wary when you're using it. Next we have the Hover Pack. I mentioned this back in, uh, in the late game of Slide 2 Band of Thieves. If you hold it down, you can hover for a short time. But it doesn't last forever though. The ascent is very slow too. But like I said, it could be useful if you're if you need to get the higher ledges like Ed Arpeggio's Blip. So this might be worth considering if you get to episode 8, which is the very level that this power-up gets locked in. Next is Size to Stabilizer. I showed this during a fight back in episode 7. But if you don't have the Shrink Bomb, then you have the Size to Stabilizer. But it only shrinks one enemy, or maybe multiple enemies if you manage to hit them at the same time. I'm not sure, I've never tried it that way. But it's best if you need to take out one enemy at a time. Next is Temporal Lock. It can freeze, what's it, freeze time around the guards temporarily at least. So Belly has the ability to manipulate time. I'm starting to think that the Sly Cooper gang could be considered demigods in some way with all these really strange power-ups that can manipulate physics. But as the power-up states, it freezes guards in place temporarily. Makes, it's very useful if you need to make a getaway, either from a fight or if you need to sneak around a guard. And the last one is basically an upgrade, long toss. You can throw things further with Sly Belly, usage is automatic. Next we have the Murray, and if you think Murray was very OP before, you haven't seen anything yet. First we have Fists of Flame, you can turn ordinary punches into fiery ones. The first enemy you come in contact with will burn and die immediately. This is very useful if you have a bunch of enemies and you need to clear them out as quickly as possible, especially if you need to deal with these flashlight guards, but then again the flashlight guards, they're not very strong in this game. They're pretty much as weak as the smaller guards when it comes to the Murray. Next we have the Raging Inferno Flop. Basically it's a Thunder Flop, but when you land it causes fire. And it can burn anything within range. Let's try it out on these two guards staying right there. Wait, did it work? Oh it did work. I just hit the table before I hit the ground. but. The effect is just the same, it burns any enemies in the vicinity and kills them immediately. Next is Berserker Charge, scatter enemies with this powerful run. Not only this could help big traveling uh, places with Murray faster, 
but it also stuns enemies when you can make contact. It, it stuns them when you're either behind them and unnoticed, and unnoticed, or when you're in a fight. So again, very useful. It even stuns the big flashlight guards when you're in combat. I will show this right now because we got a flashlight guard right here. So it's very simple to pick them up and throw these guards. Okay, now things start to get ridiculous. We'll, we'll segue into the next power up Diablo Fire Slam. Used while carrying an enemy to create a deadly firestorm. I just killed the guard. <laughs> So I can't show that off. And I just go the other one. Of course. Figures out what happened. And I just gotta go find another guard. Fantastic. Oh, there's one right there. It's gonna cut, but don't need to do that. Now, like Diablo Fire Slam, if you hit the power up button. Which one did I decide to? Oh, what? Oh, what? Damn it. Get over here. Oh, I don't think I have enough energy. Damn it. What a bad time to run out of energy. I gotta retreat. There's something I should probably mention if I didn't mention this in the, at any point in the LP. But if you go back into the safe house with a character and come back out, their health and thief feeder will be automatically refilled. So in case you need to make a haste retreat and go back for a refill, you can do that. Which is very fortunate. I believe this little exploit is featured in the later games as well, so make sure to take advantage of that whenever you're playing a Sly Cooper game that's Sly 2 or after. There, finally got it off! <laughs> Took quite a while. Unfortunately, when you hit the power up button with Diablo Fire Slam, Murray automatically throws the opponent down like so, but it causes a huge fire spread that will kill any enemies near you. This is very good for crowd control. I tried it out prior to recording and it makes clearing out enemies a huge, not a huge task, but a simple task. It is very, very useful. Like I said, if you need crowd control. I believe to show off a power up that I was gonna wait till later on. That was the juggernaut throw thrown Objects explode on impact. The usage is automatic. Basically, when you throw an enemy, it causes more damage than usual. And I'll segue to the next power-up, Turnbuckle Launch, which I did show off late in the LP. But if you hold down the power-up button and hit X, Murray will make a higher jump than usual. Makes getting to higher ledges very, very simple. And last but not least is Gatulor. Gutchiller Roar. I don't know how to pronounce the first word. I apologize for that. And I see it, say that's the last one because we already know what Atlas Strength is. We can carry, jump while carrying somebody or something. But the Roar can, can scare off any enemies if you're in a fight. See how I got this guard. His attention. And when I roar, he'll run away because he fears me now. Which means I can make a sneak attack if I want to. As I think it's very appropriate if we end things off with Sly himself. After all, he is the star of the show. Or the game, rather, not show. The first power-up we have is Smoke Bomb, which is something, of course, I've heavily praised. It can be get away from huge crowds of enemies if you need to get out of a fight. It's not a guarantee escape, depending on how you execute it, but it is very useful if you need to make a quick escape, like I said. The next one can only be used in combat only. This is the combat dodge, so I need to find a guard to get him to fight. Hey, get over here. Now a combat dodge. You can hit the power button and Sly will make a quick dodge. It's not guaranteed against big flashlight guards because you gotta time when the guard will shoot and when to use that dodge. But if you need to swerve around enemies, then you can do that. And then I'm going to die momentarily. A smoke bomb with a quick escape. <laughs> another reason, another reason, another example that how useful the smoke bomb can be. 
I don't use the combat dodge too much because I don't really need to dodge while during a fight. But if you need to use that, then that's your prerogative. The next one is Stealth Slide. You can roll through the level silently. So I'm going to show this off right near a guard. Probably not that one because facing me. Let's go right behind him. So you know that if you run behind enemies, that will make noise and that will alert their attention. That's not the case with Stealth Slide. Let's get your loot first, even though I don't need loot anymore. I got every power up in the game at this point. But if you hit the power up button, you can go right near the enemies like so, and they will not be alerted. That is a huge advantage to st Stealth Slide. Another advantage to this power up is that if you go down a slope, it will make Slide travel faster. So, there are multiple advantages to Stealth Slide, as I'll show right here. Be very useful if you need to get to places faster. Next is Alarm Clock, a useful dist uh, distraction tool if you need to get by enemies or need to alert them to a certain point. But it's not a guarantee, as you can see. I don't use alarm clock that much because it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why, but from my experience, it's a 50-50 with the alarm clock. Next, we have the reflexes. Like I said, this is a throwback to Sly 1 slow power. It just slows time down to a crawl, as you can see. It can be very irritating. Like I show off with silent obliteration in slow motion. But it's not that useful in the long run. Because it slows down everything, including yourself. Next we have Feral Pounds, jump over vast distance, distances. So hitting the power up button will make Sly well outside to make a huge leap. But if you keep holding down the left analog stick while you're moving, Sly will roll through so you can keep jumping. This is this is very useful if you need to make a high jump or if you need to make an easy transition to like climbing or maybe a spire jump near somewhere or if you just need a jump with a little extra oomph so to speak. Now we have the knockout dive, another throwback power there, another throwback power up to Sly 1. It just knocks out enemies, so you can take them out with silent obliteration or whatever sneak sneak attack you have with Sly Cooper. I wonder if it works in a fight. Let's find that out. Not sure it does. Oh, it does! That's very useful then. You can stun enemies no matter what position they're in. Next is the Insanity Strike. It confuses enemies that attack into attacking each other with a tap from your cane. So just hit the power up button, and the first enemy you see, you can hit. But instead of attacking you, they will attack any other guard that's nearby. This is a very entertaining power up in my opinion because you can just hit multiple enemies with this Insanity Strike and just watch them fight. <laughs> There's a sick, sick pleasure well, not sick pleasure, that will make me sound very demented. But there's just something very funny about seeing the AI fight each other. But it could also make for a quick getaway if you need to turn enemies against each other. Like you're seeing right now. Next we have the, volta the voltage attack. Something that I've shown off very effectively throughout the later part of the LP. Just activate with your power up and wipe out any enemies with one strike. It's an instant kill. Next we have something similar to Insanity Strike on a larger scale, the Rage Bomb. It uses all enemies in the area into attacking each other. So if you don't like to get up close and personal with an enemy to use Insanity Strike, you got the Rage Bomb. Though you need to time it to, to make sure that it works. But when you do that, it has the same effect as Insanity Strike like I said before. But it 
But the difference is, of course, it turns multiple enemies against each other. I always use this one just once in the LP, but the music box can put any enemies, any, any and all enemies in the vicinity to, a, to sleep. So, very similar to Bentley's snooze bomb, but it just takes a while for, it to, to, for the effect to kick in. Next, we have one of my new favorite power-ups in the game, the lightning spin. Pretty much, it's the voltage attack on a circular scale. And also, it's instant. The minute you press it, it activates, so you don't have to wait for Slide to activate it manually with its cane and then go to town on someone. The minute you press th that power button, it just activates. So that's what makes it one of my new favorite powers in this game. It's gonna be very efficient for crowd control as well. Of course, we got the Paraglide, the only power-up in the Sly Cooper franchise that's only associated with the R1 button and only used by Sly. I don't have to show that off because I've done that plenty of times in this game at this point. Of course, I've shown Silent Obliteration about a few times before I even got to this icon. Last, we have the Shadow Power, the last Volt Power that we got in this game. So whenever you use it, no enemy can detect you if you're standing right in front of them. However, this power-up will not activate unless you're in a fight, so make sure to keep that in mind. Now, eagle-eyed viewers would, would see at any time I went to the gadget grid this game, there were three empty spaces here, here, and, well, I can't get to it, but here as well. That's because these last three gadgets you can only unlock by using cheat codes. Yeah, there are three hidden powers in this game that probably nobody knew unless you looked it up online. First up, we have Tom. Let Tom do his thing and grab the guard's attention while you just slip by unnoticed. So basically, it's another alarm clock, but I think it's more efficient. You can track multiple guards to the vicinity. And you could just slip on by if you need to. That would have been pretty useful, but like I said, it's a cheat code. I'll put the cheat code on screen right now just so you can try it out for yourself. As I will with the other two power-ups. Which I will transition into the next one. Time Rush. Lift the fast life while you speed up the clock. Pretty much it's the opposite of Thief Reflexes. It speeds up time, which means if you're very impatient, try to get from one destination to another, then you can use this to your advantage. Again, it's a cheat, it's a cheat code power-up, so you gotta look it up online to, to, to find it. Yeah, to find it. I can't speak today, apparently. It's pretty strange, too, because this was another power-up used in Sly 1 that you can attain from a vault, so it's pretty strange that it was downgraded to a cheat code power-up, or a hidden power, so to speak. The last one, I gotta activate by using the cheat code, so excuse me for a second. Well, this icon looks familiar. It's the Mega Jump. Remember what I said that it could only be a one-time use? I was kind of lying. So we all know what the Mega Jump does, thanks to the Mega Jump job. But now you can use it anytime you want, although... Whenever you exit one episode to go to another one, you have to activate the code each time to use it. Yeah, it's kind of a hassle with that, but memorizing the code is simple, so you don't have to worry about it. And another weird thing about this, not only this is a hidden power-up, but this is your reward for 100%ing the entire game. It's pretty weird, but it's very, very fun to do. It also makes navigating to higher ledges a lot quicker. I've already had a few runs with this but prior to recording this video. And let me tell you, it is very, very useful and very entertaining. There's one more thing I have to point out. Where a place to end this LP on back at the episode menu select screen. The reason why is because there's a bit of a weird difference between the PS2 version and the PS3 version. If you were to highlight episodes 1, 
three, five, seven, or eight. You just have to wait for a while until a badge appears on screen. But the strange thing is, in the PS3 version, when you do that for episodes 3, 5, and 7, it only takes you back to the menu select screen. I'm not sure why this was changed between versions, but if you were to do that in the PS2 version of the game, then it would take you to a, a hidden film. It could either have been a E3 promo, I think something behind the scenes, I'm not too familiar with this as I discovered this recently, but I will show everything you can unlock by using this badge feature right now. Again, it's pretty strange that they changed this between the PS2 and the PS3 version. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's unlocked automatically at the watch a movie section. I don't think so. No, it's not. It's just to set up a getaway films and the prelude cinematic as well. So it, that's a really weird change to end things on. But that's all I gotta show for this extra video slide to Band of Thieves. So finally, the LP is over. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally at the end of the road. Glockless been defeated. Belly's unfortunately in a wheelchair now. But I will not be doing slide 3 in the near future. Like I said in the last video, I am way too burned out of the Sly Cooper franchise for now. Considering how long this LP is gone. That being said though, I'm going to go practice on the next game that I have planned in the future. Hopefully it won't take as long as this one. I highly doubt it though considering what it is. But you'll find out when I manage to get around to it. But until that time comes, everyone, farewell for now, and I hope you enjoyed Sly 2 Band of Thieves.